Okay. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, making it to Vasanthi's talk today on Biome Trust's um, session. On, we call it our knowledge session, but uh, we also have uh, speakers who also tell us nice stories and you know give us a great enjoyable time. So uh, we'll begin today by uh, we we'll, we would like to give you all a small introduction to our organization that is Biome Environmental Trust, and uh, I request um, Avinash, who's our senior, to do that. Uh, Aishu can remove the that uh, and pin the poster, and Avinash will. Avinash, you're there. Hi, good good afternoon, everybody. So, <clears throat> thanks, Uma. Uma anchors are what we no, uh, no, usually it's called the Knowledge Friday. It's happening on Saturday today. So, uh, anyway, just a quick few words about us about Biome. Uh, uh, I think Biome was born uh, really by uh, by a bunch of us uh, grappling with the issues of the city in some sense. Um, uh, which translated to also issues that we had to deal with in our personal lives, uh, uh, coming together and 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 trying to address it, but trying to address it also a little mindfully, looking at what the connections with the city are, uh, and and it so happened that all of us were dealing with the issues of water, and 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 somewhere I think the the genesis of biome is really this informal coming together of people. And slowly, we uh, started engaging with different kinds of urban communities um, uh, and Vishu, uh, you know, uh, Vishwanath, who's been been kind of our um, Baba, so to say, uh, <laughs> had, of course, been on this uh, pathway for a long time. He'd already, uh, you know, spent a decade in dealing with water issues. He had experience. Um, as a part of food co, uh, so on and so forth. But then, uh, I think in the early 2000s, we a few of us informally came together, started working together, and thus was born both, uh, uh, you know, what we now legally call Biome Solutions Private Limited, where a lot of the consultancy and the architecture work happens, and Biome Environmental Trust. Uh, and we realized that for our work, we need these different kind of legal entities that. You know, the informal way of working has its uh, limitations at some point. I mean, we had to deal with, we called ourselves the Rainwater Club at one point of time. And we had to deal with a lot of phone calls about whether we have a swimming pool or not. Uh, as we evolved thus, we realized, okay, let's, let's uh, you know, uh, uh, create formal entities and, and, and kind of expand our work. But we've always operated with a spirit where... Uh, as a as a as an organization, we're really a platform for a lot of the individuals to come, uh, explore certain issues, bring the value they bring, take the value that they can take back, go, remain, whatever the case may be. So we operate that way. It's uh, it's really a platform for exploring ideas. Our spirit is very very collaborative. Uh, we always work. Uh, uh, also acknowledging the very informal forms of knowledge that really shape what happens on the ground. So, so the water tanker wala and his insight, uh, you know, the mason, the plumber, and his story and what that means for the sector, the well digger, the sanitation worker. These uh, conversations for us and the farmer. These are conversations for us where really, uh, you know, uh, is the is where uh, knowledge emerges. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, and our work is really about uh, kind of having these conversations, understanding these insights, and then sharing these insights in various forms of uh, uh, in various fora in different languages, right? I mean, uh, uh, so be it the formal academic circles, be it the policy circles, be it the NGO practice circles. I think what we're all doing is really translating. You know this thing that we understand ground up and sharing and therefore we you know call ourselves a practice to policy bridge in a more formal sense 
So we are working with communities trying to implement solutions. We are working with communities doing research alongside, you know, academic institutions when we have to find new ways of solving problems. But these new ways of solving problems is more often than not a synthesis of formal forms of knowledge and informal forms of knowledge. Uh, uh, we are also then, uh, you know, engaging with the city in various ways. One example is today's uh, forum of sharing this and, and what we call, you know, public education. I mean, I find the words public education itself rather condescending sometimes, but that's the nature of it. Uh, and then, of course, we are engaging with with government institutions, government agencies, uh, you know, trying to trying to get uh, this quote unquote system to see what's happening on the ground and therefore to respond to the situation in ways that uh, acknowledges the good things that are happening, that incentivizes the good things that are happening rather than only functioning from a perspective of saying, we have to design a system to make sure the bad the bad person doesn't behave badly. Uh, I think that's a constant grappling, and I think that's a. Uh, I'll I'll stop there. That's a. Uh, so so that so the collaborative spirit is very important for us, and we acknowledge that, and we recognize that solutions are really at the intersections of all kinds of disciplines. You know, social, natural, um, and very very informal forms of knowledge that emerge from the ground. Uh, and so our, our, our kind of knowledge Fridays or knowledge Saturdays or whatever is a small effort internally to 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 speak without the uh, boundaries of uh, you know uh, regular everyday work and be able to share and listen to others. I think that's a good enough one, uh, Uma. Back to you. Thank you, Avinash. Thank you so much. Uh, so. Vasanti, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Yes, yes. I was trying to uh, get some little bit of charge because I'm a charge gobbler. So I thought my phone needs to have a little bit more to sustain. But I think we will see. Yes, that's fine. Okay. So I um, will now introduce you formally. But before that, I must tell everybody. So uh, I was uh, messaging Vasanti. Uh, every now and then saying, you know, so many people have registered, so many people have registered. And she kept to saying, oh, so many, <laughs> now I'm getting nervous. And I said, what are you getting nervous? This must be the smallest audience that you have ever uh, addressed because she's so used to addressing huge thousands of people in large auditoriums. So I think uh, Vasanti is one of those people about which I'm sure we can all say that she doesn't need any introduction, but still I am going to give some kind of, uh, you know, formal introduction. So we all know Vasanti is a celebrated media personality. She's an award-winning journalist, a radio and television personality, as well as a media entrepreneur. Uh, she's the founder and CEO of Pickle Jar which helps businesses and institutions build stories of impact through podcasts, web series, and events around important social issues. Uh, Vasanti has had a distinguished career with NDTV 24-7 as a special correspondent, the New Indian Express, All India Radio's Akashwani, and Radio City 91.1 FM, on which she used to host the high-energy primetime breakfast show. I'm sure many of you would have listened to it. Is anchored international documentaries uh, such as BBC's BBC World News's One Square Mile uh, is a podcast host, among which the popular podcast The Dosa King on Spotify, made by the production house of Oscar award-winning Gunit Monga, uh, is one, and writes and, and she also writes a column for Deccan Herald. Uh, in her writings and social media blogs, Vasanti highlights nuances of a changing India but yet to change social divides and gender norms, all via some interesting interactions with everyday Indians like cab drivers, teachers, writers, those in tech jobs, and various other people. Vasanti is also a political commentator who has been invited by news houses such as CNN News 18, NDTV, The News Minute, and The Wire to make sense of Indian elections, like in the recently concluded Karnataka elections. Uh, uh, news Laundry and The News Minute had run a day-long uh, you know, updates of what was happening uh, during the Karnataka when the results were coming in. And uh, 
uh, Vasanthi was there as part of that entire team. Uh, having extensively traveled across several states, solo and via public transport to uncover stories and cover events, brings a unique perspective as a woman and a traveler. Uh, she has an amazing connect with her audiences and with the people she meets and is able to fluently speak five languages. And I'm sure that, you know, helps with the connect that she forms. She's also a singer of tunes who considers herself a nomad and lives the philosophy of going where life takes her and taking what life gives her. She has uh, been conferred with several awards, including the Radio Excellence Award for in India's English RJ of the Year in 2007, the Rotary Vocational Excellence Award in 2013, and the UNFPA Bath Gladly Award for Gender Sensitivity in Journalism for the year 2020 for her reporting on unheard voices of women from her travels across Karnataka for the assembly elections. We're really fortunate to have her today to tell us some stories from her solo travels across 10 states in the past elections. So, Vasanti, all yours. And uh, there is a request that I would like to make that uh, please end your storytelling with a do line, ga ke suna dena humko. Oh. <laughs> I hope in any case you have Anuradha Sharma joining in from Siliguri. She plays the flute. Wow. Yeah, so uh, Anu, I'm telling you that when, when we end and I'm going to, I don't even know what to sing. Probably I can I can leave it as uh, Aapki Farmaish. Or agar wo gana mujhe pa, you know, if I know that song, then probably, yes, somebody can also, else can also join. So, I just did I hear my name and flute there? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. The time starts okay. now. Okay, anyway, take a pelly up, curly ji or mira flute the hair anyway. I mean, ring ray, right? Um, so here we are, and uh, I'm extremely mindful that I uh, am competing for your attention with many things else, with, with Ma Durga being Mahalaya guests, visitors, and a couple of people whose names are Virat Kohli and Babar Azam. But you all have chosen and made the choice to come listen to me and my stories. So gratitude. I seriously mean that. Usually I start my talk, uh, and if it is a stage, and uh, Uma mentioned that this must be the smallest group. I'm like, yes, Uma, I, uh, haven't you hired 10,000 people to come by trucks uh, and log into this call and listen to me? I mean, anything less than 10,000 is a compromise. I shall, I shall just, anyway, live with that. But once the, uh, you know, the talk time now begins of, of what I have... Uh, um, gathered for you the stories from my wanderings across India, then I'm like all serious uh, because I have a task on my hand and, and I also have selected a few pictures. But I just want to tell all of you, um, and especially Bayom, thank you for indulging a wanderer. Because who would really think that someone who just takes off like that uh, to towns, to villages, to states, cities, Tehsils, that anything good can, can come out of that. But here I am, invited by you, and here you are, uh, sitting around me, all, all of us, probably under a tree, um, and to talk to each other. So namaskara, and uh, namaste adab to wherever you're joining me from. Um, this talk is very special to me, because this uh, is put together by people like Uma, like, like uh, Vishwa, uh, Vishwanath, uh, Shri Kantaya, there's also Chitra Vishwanath, the entire biome team who are already doing good work. And therefore, I was really thinking that I should choose stories that probably inform you in some sense. Um, I'm glad, Uma, that you told me that I do not have to stick to the pressure of speaking on water or any such issue. And yet, I'm thinking that is a journalist hangover. And I am going to uh, share with you the theme that I chose for, for my talk. 
I start with this geography that we are so familiar with from our from our maps, from from the places we travel to, our native, and the story that I probably I will tell you a little bit about the shortlist and how I came to um, choose these places. So first, I'm, I would be taking you all the way to Shundarban, to West Bengal, and then come down south to Andhra, to Anantpur, and then end with Bundelkhand. That's the plan. Now, I... Uh, see, much of the travel that I have done um, in the past 11 years, to be precise, is the one which I'm taking into account for this talk. Right. So a couple of things out of the way. Because Kalali Chakra as you say in Kannada, or Gumakkadi, jaise hum Hindi mein kehte hain, Alemari, you know, Ulagam Sutrup Walibi, as my ex-boss Uttara from uh, when I was working in the Indian Express, she had nicknamed me after an extremely popular movie called Ulagam Sutrum Waliban, the hero who, you know, who keeps going around the world. So, um, the travel that I did as a kid was, as a child, as a student, was more due, due to my father, the late Sri K. V. Vijay Sarathi, his job in a PSU, BHEL, which was highly transferable, which, which took us to countless towns and um, places and states of India, um, Andhra, Bihar, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Punjab. Um, yeah, lots and lots of, uh, and present day Jharkhand. So that was uh, one kind of travel. Then I got into a profession as, as a journalist. So for 10 years, I really went nowhere. Trust me, I didn't because I was at the desk at Indian Express. Then I was an RJ, which means that I had to go live from my studio. So um, that also didn't count for travel. Then I went into NDTV as, as a reporter, as Uma mentioned. And even there, it was with a crew or it was a very prearranged and in a way, a travel of privilege and luxury. So I don't, um, it, I was very well looked after as, as, the, as the channel uh, definitely did. So the period that I'm counting uh, is the one which started after I so-called took a break from breaking news. Um, so it's a decade of travel, much of which I did bitty. I don't know if you all know what the word bitty means. I'm also going to use the chat box um, to, to see if uh, people wish to communicate with me via the chat box. Um, those of you who are not from Karnataka or Bangalore, do you understand the word bitti? Oh, somebody said the, you have a recording for this. Well, uh, um, I'm sure Uma and yeah, yeah, free, <laughs> free travel. How does that work out? That if somebody has called me to moderate at a panel discussion, anchor a show or help train some people in, in communication or media, then uh, they were anyway getting me there, that the transport arrangements would be made. And all that I had to do was to add two days before or stay back two days later to chalk out my travel, my own itinerary in that. So that was the category of most travel that I have done. Um, but I also spend for my travel to go into places which are really not on the tourist map which you will probably know right now, and much of which is election reporting. Because I realize that Indian elections are a unique creature across the world. We are, you know, everything is so robust. That there are huge campaigns, heavy high decibels. You and I know that. And then there is, of course, um, you know, this color and, and vitality. There is complaints. There is, there is appeal. There is... Um, you know, Rob Jamana, that's the time when the voter really thinks that, okay, this is my time and I shall account, take all these people, you know, make them come and kneel down, probably even prostrate to seek my vote. So the Indian elections uh, travel have been across to almost seven states now. But coming back, let's start with my very first travel of today's shortlist, which is Shundarbhan. This was during the time when they, the pandemic was still raging. And Bihar, uh, 
West Bengal was a state I had not traveled to. As a kid, uh, as a child, I was in Haldia briefly when my father was posted there. But I had absolutely no memory of that. I had no uh, knowledge of the language except to say, say, Ami Bashonti. And then Ami Bangalore Theki Aschi. And um, yeah, one more very, very important line, which is Ami Niramish. Uh, just to say, I'm vegetarian. And then get fed absolutely delicious food. That was my beginning of a 20-day trip into this historically, politically, culturally, socially, every Lee important state of Bengal, West Bengal. That's where I shall take you. And I landed in Calcutta. And I'm going to, uh, meanwhile, just take a quick look at the time. It's now 3.26. It's almost, my preamble has been so long. But I hope that every state or every each of these three things, if I can devote 15 minutes each, then probably we can, uh, uh, that should be enough. You know, otherwise it's, it's just a beast and I, I have had no clue how to tackle this uh, um, travel talk. In West Bengal, in Calcutta, so the first, um, let's say the journey from Bangalore to Calcutta, I made by flight. But I was determined, like I have made a few rules for myself as, as this solo wanderer, that A, I will make use of public transport or shared transport with the locals as much as, as I can. I shall be a reporter in a sari, so you can see. Let me also show you that today uh, is Upalakshmi what I have worn. Let me see if you can, if you can see what, you know, I have her back. So I, if you can, if you are going to recognize the motif uh, in this uh, blouse, which is picked up from Dokhinapan in Kolkata, thanks to my friend Anamika Dev. Um, so yeah, reporter in a sari, reporter using largely public transport, uh, reporter usually carrying a own steel lota tumbler uh, plate and a little bit of spoon and uh, all that. Uh, once, uh, I mean, something which I've learned from Vani Murthy, uh, who, who is, you know, whose very uh, life concept stands for sustainability, that whenever you're offered something in single-use plastic, then you take this out and yeah, that's your travel companion. So no tissue paper, all those things. Also another rule or, or another thing that I try to uh, follow is, is in homes more than hotels. Because A, uh, someone who's traveling independently saves up on hotel bills. But the more important thing is that you get to soak in somebody who is from that land. All this has helped me immerse myself in this India travel um, and also, uh, you know, made me hugely, immensely respect uh, Indian values of hospitality and, and, and the way of life. From Calcutta, when I started on this journey into Shundarban, all that I knew was what we had read in the textbooks. Shundarban is a delta which is formed by uh, the Brahmaputra, the Meghana, the Ganga rivers. It's known for the lion, you know, uh, like Ma Mamota Didi would say, right? Uh, Army Bengal tiger, right? So that's what you know Shundarban for. But every land when you go without an agenda when you don't chalk up micro minutely the plan surprises you and this was one such travel um thanks to somebody called vidisha bhaduri and and the reason why i keep telling the names is that to tell you that nothing that i accomplish is ever my own i owe it all to the people i meet and to the friends who connect me so Janali Saikya Khasnabish from uh, Bangalore, who saw on my Facebook and Instagram that I'm headed to Bengal, told her friend Bidisha Bhaduri, who's so much into beautiful crafts and katha work and things like that. So when she and I were speaking, she said, you know what? You should meet this lady. She's a teacher and she runs a school in Shundarban. And then I was instantly fascinated and we took this travel of a hundred kilometers all across the river, which has got my name. And I'm going to try and see if I can um, 
Yes, let's let's try and move to this full screen. Hello. Let's try this again. A river by my name called the Bashonti. And 100 kilometers along this, uh, there are trains that run from Calcutta. Uh, I was in a car with uh, Shatarupa Majumdar, the teacher I was telling you about. She was in along with her teacher, Mrs. Devjani Rodra. And one place where you see that I have stopped, that's the river Ichamati. I love Bengalis and how they, they name rivers. They name people. Of course, they name... They, they, they have a great name, uh, which would seem straight out of some literature books. And then they also give them a dark nam, something like Minku or things like that. <laughs> but they are great at uh, naming. And this is one such river. But what I'm pointing, it, pointing out to is the border, Bangladesh, which was barely 12 kilometers, I was told, from where we were standing. And these were the women of Hingolganj, the taluk uh, in, in um, Shundarban. So there are a couple of districts, uh, uh, Chobis Paragana, the north and the south. In, in south, we will pronounce that as 24 Paraganas. But that's not how they say it. They say Chobish Paragana. Yeah? So <laughs> these are the women. I will come back to them in a bit. Uh, and as you can see, the mask shows that the pandemic was still at its peak. People were, in fact, wondering, what was I doing? Um, because I didn't realize that there was a pandemic. And this is Chachi Ma, who fed us in uh, Shatarupa school, uh, who, who, has, who I was told, in fact, by Shatarupa and her team, had, has had a very tragic personal life. But uh, her, uh, you know... Um, Fatima, as, as her name is, the way she has been feeding people and cooking with so much love, that's uh, who we were greeted by. The, the picture that I am now showing you, this is Shatarupa. Incredible uh, inner strength. In fact, one of the um, stories that I wrote for the Hindu after my return from Bengal elections was on her. And um, I'm going to request... Uma, I have shared this on WhatsApp with you, Uma. And um, I wrote for the Hindu, it's, it is called How One Woman's Extraordinary Efforts Gave a Poverty-Stricken Island Its Own English Medium School. So that's Shatarupa and her, and her team. There is Bikash here. There is there's so many people. Uh, and there is Basmati Birua. Uh, I'm pointing uh, out at her. She's from Jharkhand. She also does fantastic things with education. This is my first theme. The reason why I've chosen Shundarban is I have chosen the first theme as education and what's happening in interior India that some of you may not know about. So this is Basmati. This is Siddharth who joined in from Jharkhand. Uh, there's also Anuradha here. Um, so this was this is a picture for my second travel to the region. The other pictures are from my first one when I went for the elections. The reason why um, this picture is good is that it shows you and the people who... Um, who bagged Shatarupa, this English teacher, when she was so bothered and disturbed that for the children of Adivasis in that area, for the children of BD workers in this Hingolganj taluk and um, uh, of the district, there was no school. Even if there was, there was of course a Bengali medium school, but it wasn't consistent. And she just felt that as a teacher, she owes it to that region. And it all was almost a nine-year tapasya. You can read that uh, uh, article in the Hindu to to just see, and today the school has grown so beautifully. It's this if you can read this, it's called Shwapnapuran, the fulfillment of a dream. It's still under construction, as you can see. Many good people have come to support that. And in uh, Shwapnapuran, we met the most some of the most delightful children. I was, uh, I, I just, and this picture is, is by Barsha Nandi. She also joined me on the second trip. Uh, which I went back two years later. Um, Basha is from Shiliguri and uh, she also joined on this because it's almost like I want to take everybody to Shundarban. I mean, frankly, those who are now watching this talk of mine, hearing me, if you really want to take that trip, please let me know. You can always connect later and I'm, I will 
uh, connect you to Shatarupa and the team. They would be very happy to have you there. Now, um, the I'm going to fast forward this because there's so much to say about the school. Um, th there's there's always time for reading up, uh, if you wish, probably some links that I can send through Uma, uh, since she may have your email addresses. But you know what was the most moving part for me um, as this traveler who started her West Bengal election 23-day journey from this tip um, and bordering Bangladesh was, first of all, the power of Akla Cholo, as Tagore said, right? Um, Aklo cholo, aklo cholo, aklo cholo, aklo cholo re. If there is no one coming along with you, walk alone. So this woman, Shatarupa, when she decided on this, there were people who kept joining her. And today that region um, has not just one, but I think three schools. I don't know if by the time I've given this talk, they've even added one more. And they're also doing for rehabilitation, uh, livelihood measures of the locals there. So I'm just going to do it. This was a school which you are going to see now, a small video clip, which was like so picturesque, so um, uh, incredibly serene. And it wasn't an easy school to build because literally these are uh, cyclone prone areas. Uh, uh, you are at the mouth of the river. And this school, uh, has children coming, walking, taking auto, taking the ferry from so far and still they make it just so that they may get a better shot at the future. Yay! Swapna Puran Shiksha Niketan. You can see that... made of earth bags. Made of what bags? Earth bag construction. Eco-friendly earth bag construction. Achha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we finally have come, and then uh, what a journey this has been to have this to see the school in Kalitala, the school that Shotarupa Mojumdar and her team have built. So that is Shapnapuran and uh, the Kalitala school, uh, the second time when Anuradha and other friends joined, it was a probably a distance of, uh, I don't know, 30 kilometers. But for us, it, it, it took uh, almost 40 minutes by the auto, the Fatfati and then the ferry. Uh, so it was, as I have mentioned in the video, also quite a journey. This was when I was on the elections trip. Um, what interested me was the women at leader, leadership level, at the panchayat uh, level. So Shatarupa, when she was getting me back, it had already gr grown dark. I had already had uh, a chat with people there. What were their aspirations? There were mothers saying that they are so happy that there is a school. Uh, and then they were like, Didi, there is just, you know, otherwise my elder child is still uh, never gone to school. I had to pull him into BD rolling. And uh, there were uh, these stories that one was hearing. There, there was also the cyclone, um, which had just then hit the Bengal coast. And um, in the midst of all that, we got invited to a pujo that was going on. And this was still 2021 uh, April. Yeah, yeah, that's the time. And this lady in pink, this fashia, the, this Rani color magenta, she was uh, she was a leader at the at the panchayat there. And um, I, though I got to speak to her very briefly, I got told about the good work that she and her husband and her family do. This is a little longish video, but uh, just to give you the thing that we were passing through. <laughs> Yeah, 
passed by so many rivers in Gujarat. Vasanthi, when the volume of the video is loud, we can't hear you speak. Ah, got it. Keep that in mind. Okay. So, um, I'm going to... Yeah, thanks for that, uh, Uma. So, I'm going to now go from Shundarban, as I had told you from the, from the map here, um, that from the east, uh, the state of West Bengal, I'm go we are now going to go to my other selected travel. Though, of course, there have been lots and lots of travels, as you can imagine. Some of you have al already known that through my social media posts. But I am kind of cutting across states to get to Andhra, which is a very recent travel, in fact. I'm going to get to that. But before that, I just want to have a... Let me stop sharing this. And... Let me get back to my screen. Okay. Yeah. I just want to pause a little bit because I know there might be questions. Let me also check if there are questions. Maybe a good idea is to, to take the questions a little later. Embankments to save from floods. Okay. Yeah, the Hindu. Okay, please feel free to post your questions here. We, we can always take them up later if you... Ask, if you wish to ask me something about the Bengal travel when I moved into Andhra, then you, we can always get back to that. Right. So before we proceed, I have a quiz for you. Uh, first of all, if there's a show of hands or, or this thing saying that, how many of you have traveled solo? Uh, that's my first question. And how many of you uh, and if you wish to say solo and into which states, please use the chat box for that. The second question is, how many states of India have you been able to cover solo or with a group or whatever? Because, you know, when we are exchanging notes at the end of the uh, talk, then probably it's a, it's a good thing to, uh, I don't know, compare. So, so that's one thing. The third thing is a quiz. And I'm going to answer this question right at the end of the talk. Quiz question number one. What is a place or a little town or one space, you know, area that is in Tamil Nadu technically but belongs to Kerala? Like Kerala government has a jurisdiction there but it, it's actually sitting inside Tamil Nadu. Okay. okay, that's question number one for you. Okay. Now the second is specifically for the biome team. I, or, or those who work on water, because that's the story I'm going to end with. And the and the question is that there is one um, river. Again, that's also the name of a region, so it can be a little confusing. But you still still go with that. Name a river in Uttar Pradesh that um, has the word five in it, in some language, okay? Five, in some Indian language. A river that has got the, you know, uh, synonym or meaning for five, the number five. If you want a clue, you can always uh, sort of tell me. Meanwhile, I'm just going to do a little quick check because somebody was having trouble joining this um, link. So I'm just sending whatever has been sent to me. All right. Give me give me just a, a second there. Meanwhile, I might as well stop at or rather okay. instead of me, I can at least show you a picture that the picture Five. so that you can mm. keep looking at that. Because this is the next picture I'm going to the next place that I'm going to take you to. Are you able to see the picture? Yeah. Let me see if there's a picture I can stop at. All right. Yes, give me a moment and we shall be. All right. So now this picture which you, this is where my journey started. Okay. Now this is a picture of the Nandi, which is a Vahan of Lord Shiva. And this is also the name of hills that, that uh, border Bangalore. 
Yeah. So those of you who are not from Bangalore, I don't know if you've heard of Nandi Hills. Very picturesque, beautiful spot. And this is the place that you have to pass um, when you are proceeding uh, to this town in Andhra Pradesh, which is my second of the unforgettable travels talk at Biome Talks today. We've just now ended the one at Shundarban, West Bengal. And I have now gotten you straight um, south to a place which is otherwise known as drought prone, arid. That's part of something, a region called the Rayala Seema. And um, it's, it's historically also pretty important. Very close to this, this place is also Madanapalli, uh, Horsley Hills. It's also believed to be very close to the place where Rabindranath Tagore wrote the national anthem. Um, there is actually a, a memorial that marks that. So all that, of course, is in the region. I'm not talking about the exact spot of the picture that you're seeing. But geographically, I'm placing the, the uh, region that we are now traveling to. You are with me in this bus. It is the view from a window seat. You are fighting with me to get the window seat. I try not to budge, but then I give up. I say, fine, I keep traveling. I'm such a nomad. Right, now is your turn. So you are in this window seat now to travel with me to a very hope-giving, heartwarming, uplifting story of a farmer's cooperative. It's called the CCD. And I'm going to actually read from a mail that I that I have, and I'm probably going to fast forward. Yeah. So, you know, this drive um, along, um, I, I mean, all there were a bunch of us led by a professor, a professor called Professor Trilochan Shastri. And besides having been the dean at the Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore, Professor Trilochan Shastri has done something, in my opinion, path-breaking, life-altering for almost 43,000 farmers from 553 cooperatives in more than 1,200 villages across Andhra and Maharashtra, the places being Yavatmal near Nagpur, Incidentally, I was in Yavatmal with Professor Tilochan Shastri to see the other farmers cooperative, um, which is called the Shetkari Adivasi uh, Sanghatan, Adivasi Farmers um, Cooperative in near Nagpur, almost 150 kilometers from Nagpur that I traveled to. There is also one in Adilabad, um, uh, which is again in Andhra. There is one in, sorry, sorry Telangana, my apologies, the Telangana. Um, there is one in Chittur, which is very close to Tirupati. And then there is this, Anantapur. So I, I uh, chose this picture because, well, it's it's now in hot demand. There's this land. The, the Kia, this whole um, manufacturing space that's been taken, um, makes it makes the real estate pretty much uh, sought after. And we were driving from Bangalore into almost, uh, yeah, 70 kilometers. And then we came into this place where after we had stopped for our idli vada at, at some restaurants, uh, after I had also seen, um, you know, a, a, man, a, a processing, a food processing unit. And this place was where the pandal, as you can see, was laid for a farmer's annual general body meeting. So the CCD, I was beginning to tell you, is called the Center for Collective Development. And the annual... Mahasabha of farmers where they were presenting their accounts, right? That was what was happening. Now, in this place, um, what we, what I saw uh, was that farmers who are otherwise grounded farmers were, were at the mercy of um, uh, middlemen. They, they were, uh, had to, of course, it's all controlled by the market price over which they have no say. They, I mean, they, their produce was there, but at the same time, the price determination by is, is an external uh, to them, as, as you can guess. But what happened with the uh, uh, CCD 
which is uh, what prefer, Professor Thilochan Shastri, Center for Collective Development, as I had uh, told you. From the year of 2004, he had been uh, going, after, you know, whenever he got free time from his professorship, he's from the MIT uh, and um, I mean, the, the actual MIT at Boston. And then uh, he had been trying to convince farmers to go into the cooperative model. Many of these farmers told me that they didn't really uh, believe in it first. They, they were too scared to um, get into any anything which was other than their status quo. Uh, but uh, slowly, for, over the past 20 years, they have managed to uh, grow uh, and get their uh, get decent price for the pro for the produce. And uh, this particular one was, you know, inside. I mean, of course, there are many many videos. Unfortunately, today I couldn't get all of those. Uh, but this uh, festoons of mango leaves that you see and the farmers and, and his uh, son who is here was this groundnut processing. I mean, one is, of course, the gradation of groundnuts and then the groundnut so-called waste for that matter, which also goes as fodder. There is also oil processing uh, here. And there are, in fact, very recently they won the supplier, best supplier award from Flipkart just when I had gone. So they were a very, very proud lot. And... Um, the women and there were also many many women farmers and this was uh yeah so these were guests in the anantpur andhra crowd who i found very adorable this is meera she is a dairy farmer from tonk rajasthan uh so she also had come because out of solidarity many ngos and and you know well wishers and donors uh, and all of them uh, had come for for this so Meera is a her pura naam is Meera Jat. If you want to follow her on um, on uh, Facebook, J A T Meera Jat, extremely spunky. In fact, she kept asking Professor Trilochan Shastri, "Ki kaise sir? Ham to matlab ham doud bana dete hain wahan par hamari gaye. Lekin iska marketing kaise kare sir? Hamko sikhaye na sir." And she she told me that she she never went to school, uh, but you know uh, she has. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's in charge of her own cooperative and, and uh, she has also invited me in case I decide to uh, go to Rajasthan. And I'm very, very tempted given that Rajasthan is going to elections next month. Um, this is a little fast forwarded from that journey. Let me see. Yeah. It, you know, if, if anybody can guess what this is, if you want to put it in the chat box, please go ahead and put that. Because I would have never in my wildest imagination associated Anantapur with this fruit. I saw almost 70 acres of land. Um, also, thanks to the philanthropy of Chris Gopalakrishnan, uh, you know, one of the co-founders of Infosys, uh, who, who is also a stakeholder, very, very important investor for the farmers uh, cooperative. Uh, he's also on board and, and uh, there are 70 acres of this that I found. It's almost like me, the, the professor, and this lady you see in the background, and the person who was caretaking. There were just four of us for almost 70 acres of land and the uh, and the and the terrain of Anantapur. Um, and let me check. If I have to check, then I have to stop sharing. Can somebody unmute themselves and tell me what is this? It's a fig. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Who's speaking? Roini, Roini. Hey, hi. Roini. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, there are many people who have answered that. Oh. There are many people who have put the answer in the chat. All right, all right, all right. So, in fact, uh, there was fig and there was date. And uh, it was so sweet and tasty. I asked Professor Thirojan Shastri, how on earth did you get the figs and dates? I mean, these were Afghan dates. And these are the places where I, as a journalist, sometimes feel that, you know, the most uh, unexpected stories just, you know, kind of ambush you. They embrace you when you least expect it. Anantpur is known for its groundnuts, yes, um, because the, the soil there uh, is definitely suitable. But this is the first time that somebody was trying out. I'm told that some people have also uh, started replicating this. And uh, they were uh, almost 11 to 12 Sardarji farmers in Andhra Pradesh. You know, the Sikh farmers um, who are also, you know, who I was told by the locals there had settled, had come down to Anandpur, bought some tracts of land and all of us know what green fingers Punjabis in general have. I myself have been a child and student in Batinda when my father was posted there. 
uh, in Guru Nanak Tamil Pass Station. And we all know that enterprise that Sikhs are so famous for. But imagine, Sadarji, to see ki kar rahe ho, Anantapur mein. And here they were trying to grow not just groundnuts, but so many other things. But this farm that I'm showing you is, is part of the farmers' cooperative other uh, attempt, which, which was, um, yeah, uh, which is being tried by, yes, these farmers. All right. So um, this is the story of Anantpur. And, and you know, yeah, of course, uh, this is a route to prosperity for farmers who are otherwise uh, pretty much at the mercy of, of either the monsoons or the money lenders many times, but forming the cooperative uh, make and and when I went to Yavatmal though Yavatmal is not included uh, in this uh, trilogy of mine, uh, but certainly there was they were very happy and optimistic that both in Adilabad as well as that region they're setting up a huge atta mill um, flour mill. Okay, so that, that uh, yeah, there are a few more pictures, but I, I, I haven't put them into the drive, my bad. But happy to share it on, on, a, on a drive link later. Uh, so that basically is the story of Anantapur, and I'm getting back to my screen. Let me now take time to see what's in the chat box. And we will go to the last one, and in case somebody has answered also, Okay, Mr. Venkti Shaingar, Padmanabhapuram, Palace near Nagarkoil. Ungalukka full marks. Anybody else? The travel Travancore family. Okay, Deepankar Khasnavish, you have also got this. Yes. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, Arun Bharadwaj. Okay, RKR, how did you manage language? Where? Nenu Telugu Matlar Tanu. And then, as I told you in Bengal, of course, I was so fluent in my Bangla. Uh, you know, Amar Nam Bashonti. And there is, of course, uh, the next travel, which is Bundel Khand, which is Hindi. So I don't know which language you're referring to. Um, yes, please do put your questions out there. I see that nobody has answered the um, question on the river. And that tells me something. That the Padmanabhapuram, you, you have guessed it. And I'm really, um, for those who have not seen Padmanabhapuram, Kerala is not part of my story today, for which Uma and Biome team will have to call me for part two of the talks. Then we include three more <laughs> of the unforgettable travel which shaped my India perspective. But if you were to travel from Tiruvananthapuram to Kanyakumari, which is about 90 kilometers, uh, then in Kanyakumari, people usually see the sunrise, sunset and be done. Don't do that. Go to this beautiful all wood palace of the Travancore family and buy an agreement between the royals of the Kerala Travancore and the Tamil Nadu government. As rightly some of you have guessed, it is sitting inside Tamil Nadu, but the jurisdiction is Kerala's for that tract, that the entire palace in town. Very, very beautiful place. Um, so we are entering the final one, Bundel Khand. But any qu questions on Anantpur? Which basically means I steal that little time to have Miru. Have any of you seen groundnut fields? Is any of you a farmer? Please let us know. Huh. Have raised hands. Okay. Um, Arun Bharadwaj, you want to unmute yourself? Hi, Vasanti. Hi. Is that the Hindon River which you were referring to earlier? Come again? Hindon, Hindon River in Uttar Hindon, Pradesh. But, but remember my clue, my this thing was that it's got to have the number five in its name. Okay. No, I thought it's uh, associated with uh, Pandava. So I thought the number five is associated with it. <laughs> oh my, that's a, that's a clever <laughs> okay. No, no, no. But frankly, I didn't know about this river. Now I'm learning something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, spell, the, spell the river that you're talking about. H-I-N-D-O-N, Hindon. Which district does it pass through? Uh, it's near Meerut. It's near the place where the Lakshagraha incident had happened. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. West, West UP, that is. No, no, no. Yes. 
Okay. okay anyway, the, the one which I'm referring to, I'm just going to uh, come to that. Okay, sure. Before that, there are some more uh, answers in the chat. Acha. Uh, okay, from Farm Veda is the company that sells the produce of the farmer products, CSD produce. Yes, Deepankar Dada, thank you so much. Um, and thanks for bringing this up because uh, some more pictures were there of the Farm Veda, which, which he has mentioned in the chat box. Because I really would like, at the at the risk of sounding like I'm, you know, an ad model, but I definitely endorse. If you would love to, it's I think available on Amazon and some Namdhari and some outlets in Bangalore. So I don't know outside, but if you really want to look for Farm Veda, they have their Ravidli mix and their, um, you know, pressed cold pressed groundnut oil to this thing, and it's all the farmers produce. It's it's all the profits go to them. One can vouch for that. So if you really want to, and it's just as good as anything else. Price-wise, it's it's very competitive. So, uh, Professor Tilojan Shastri really uh, and and people who are helping him have done that part very very well. Um, now, uh, Panchavati, Panchaganga, um, Anupa Kaushik, Panchaganga. No, no. But you're you're kind of close. And for this, I'm, I have to quickly tell you a story. Let's also keep a tab on the time. Oops, four o'clock already. Okay. Now. Uh, when I started my Uttar Pradesh elections travel, I was told by my friend, my former colleague from NDTV, Chinmay Bhavi, who was a sports correspondent, who was so good with the camera. He also went on to do a master's in visual design from IIT uh, Bombay. So he told me, Kharchmat karo camera pe. You know, you're going solo. You are going to be taking the photographs, editing. Um, I mean, basically, you are this one person army. So you might as well have a GoPro, which he had. And then he said, I'm going to lend you that. But the only condition is that I'm not going to send this to you by courier. You have to come to Mumbai to pick it up from me. I said, all right, that's a small price to pay. You're going to get a nice, cool camera, which also works underwater, just in case I get adventurous and swim in the Ganga and, <laughs> you know, Nadi. So I thought, okay, jaya jaya. So I went there. He gave me the camera. He told me how to operate the GoPro. So probably there's one picture of me with the GoPro as well. Um, and then he said, Ekam Karun, and you go to Juhu Beach and you just try. Um, just in case you run into any trouble, you, you have me to, to kind of fix and problem solve. And then you can take this for your UP travel 25 days. Then I'm supposed to come back and return the camera before coming to Bangalore. Here begins the story of the chase of a river. And that's the one which I'm going to end my talk with. The third of my unforgettable travels, the education theme, the farmer, prosperity, cooperative, wealth, all that. But the third, uh, which, which is of UP, is probably to do with uh, culture, governance, so many things, uh, infrastructure. But the, funnily enough, the story starts in Mumbai. So I go to Juhu Beach with my camera. And then I get a little bolder. I, I tried doing some Facebook Live. I said, OK, Uttar Pradesh. And then I used to have a fancy name for this. It's called the Pickle Jar Pole Express. As you all know, Pickle Jar is, is the name of my media company. We all make podcasts and stuff. And then when we go, when I go on election, I said, okay, let's call it Pole Express. So that's what it's been named um, when the, as a hashtag. So then I was standing in Juhu Beach and then I said, koi hai jo UP ke hai. after I had told, you know, I wanted to tell the nation, and I was in, um, you know, the, the, between the shore and the, and the waves of the beach, there, there was some distance and there were three people who who said, ha, hum, hum, hai, UPK. So then, yeah, if, if you think uh, the maximum number of non Mumbaikers, non Maharashtrians are from Bihar or, or, you know, the jury is still out, whether from the south. But UP is also quite a chunk. And so this man said, Chali uh, pe bat ki baat kar. So I come and then there was this taxi he was a taxi driver so me and he sat on the uh, i mean you know just just next to that somebody just pulled a little stool and that's where I, I i sat and within five minutes there was this one lean guy uh 
beard and all that he he just came and stood next to him he could he figured out that we are speaking about up and then ye jo taxi driver the ye to chup ho gaye but this other man the bearded man he said acha dekhiye mumbai mein suryodaya छह बजकर तेईस मिनट और सम सच फिगर ही गेव सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री दन मुंबई वेर इज इन यूपी दिस इज द टाइम इट आई मीन इन इन इफ यू आर इन पूर्वांचल इफ यू आर इन बनारस दिस इज द टाइम द सन राइज एंड इफ यू एंड आई आई जस्ट रियली पॉज एंड आई सेज बॉर्डर रियली वॉट टाइम द सन राइज इज आई मीन यू जस्ट गो सी द सन राइज समटाइम्स मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम स्लीप थ्रू इट and here is a man who is telling me so intently and in such detail about suryodaya and uh, i said lekin aap kitna khayal kyun rakhte hain why are you so you know bothered about when the sun rises then this man he said are hum brahman hai na and then it takes some connecting of the dots if you are aware of the indian whatever culture tradition caste whatever you call it then it suddenly i said oh okay so probably you know you 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 give the argya to to the to the sun to the rising sun and so suddenly i just saw this man who otherwise was so non descript in in a mahanagari like mumbai and the fact that he had kept track of the sunrise and because he had to because he said that every morning that's what he does wherever he is he gives the argya and he was working as a security guard in one of the many buildings in juhu it was and you could almost see from from the shirt he was wearing he was actually also having a jacket which which he uh, you know later put aside and then uh, you would have missed him like you would have never known that okay he had anything more to offer as insights because we are this all knowing people right we are people to the city we know it all and and what can somebody else really tell us that we don't know but this man he also joined he sat down and he told me and and there was a certain confidence the moment we said up there was none of the thing of the body language if you think of a security guard you know you know i'm just placing very stereotypically just for us to visualize it's, it's uh, with the utmost respect that i speak but he said kahan ja rahe hain aap up mein so i just gave him a rough itinerary i said yahan se mai garib rath garib rath express leke I'm going to land up at Vrindavan, Mathura. Wahan se I uh, hope I think I'm going to uh, Avad, which is Lucknow. Then I might go to this place and Kashi, Prayagraj, Ayodhya. This is this. I also had Muzaffar Nagar, West UP on my list at that point. Something I couldn't go to because of shortage of time. So this man, and um, let me draw out his name. Sharma ji is what we kept calling him. I will tell you probably in the chat time. uh why i'm so deeply thankful to him he said uh aap yahan sab ja rahe hain aap machna dhan nahi ja rahe hain kya hmm i said what is that maine to kabhi suna nahi he said are machna dhan kaise nahi jayenge wo to panch nadiyon ka sangam hai now i would therefore while answering the quiz question that i had myself put out to you that machna dhan or in local this thing five rivers the confluence of five rivers that was pachnada so he said how can you not go to pachnada i said uh, वैसे तो मुझे then i told him i said nadi snan ka to i just laugh try to laugh it off first uh, having first of all been very embarrassed because i thought i know reasonably about up i also spent a few formative years in bulan shahar in uttar pradesh where my father was posted um in, in you know in a school in arora atomic power plant and to be told about the name of a river which i had never matlab hawa tak nahi i have never heard about this river or the region so i tried to make light of it i said dekhi sharma ji mujhe to koi nadi snan ka to hai nahi like it's not like i'm going to haridwar rishikesh then he said usme kya hua so what nadi snan to banta hai ab इतनी दूर आप जा रहे हैं तो नदी स्थान बनता है सो देन आई टोल्ड एम आई से देन आई रिलेंटेड अलिट आई से एक्चुअली यूर राइट यू नो हैविंग ग्रोन अप इन इन द स्टेट एंड गंगा जी तो बहुत ही खास है वेरी स्पेशल टू मी आई हैव डन सम एक्सटेंसिव ट्रेवल इन उत्तराखंड एंड बद्रीनाथ इन ऑल दीज प्लेसेज सो आई सेड 
हाँ लेकिन गंगा जी का स्नान तो नहीं हो पाएगा इस बार सो देन दिस मैन एंड आई स्टिल कांट गेट दैट फेस ऑफ हिज यू नो इट्स इट्स क्लियर इट्स विजुअल ही जस्ट लिटरली लुक्स इन टू माई आईज लाइक दिस अरे गंगा जी में तो कोई भी नहा लेगा यमुना जी में नहा है ये ना आई सिर्फ क्यों बिकॉज आई हैड नेवर थॉट ऑफ दिस लाइक ओके वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन टेकिंग बात इन अ गंगा वर्सेज इन यमुना then he said ganga ji to shiv ji ki charanon se hokar jati hain now this needs a bit of mythology reference i'm guessing many of you know i'm not getting into the story of bhagirath bhagirath and bhagirathi please read up later if you if you're interested we can connect later but he said and it sort of opened my eyes to the way india is seen by her people but especially of that local region in a way that many of us miss सीइंग ही सेड यमुना जी तो शिव जी के गंगा जी तो शिव जी के चरणों से होकर जाती हैं बट यू शुड टेक अ बात इन द यमुना क्योंकि यमुना तो पट रानी है यमुना इज द क्वीन शी इज द वन हु यू हैव टू टेक अ परमिशन एंड देन एंटर एंड आई ऑफ कोर्स वॉज सर गॉब्स मैग एट दिस न्यू way of looking at rivers and i told him my you know i might as well surrender like there's no point of any intellectual <laughs> conversation at this point i said sharma ji aap bataiye to kaise jana hai kahan jana hai so he chalked out the itinerary this person who was working in that building as a guard in mumbai was my tour planner in one sense that when i stepped on to vrindavan then mathura and i stood midnight in april 2022 at the cusp of up uttar pradesh's elections when this you know this largest uh, pop, i mean electorate was going to the polls that in the highway when i stood after on on the agra mathura highway and it's fantastic now i mean there is five lane seven lane whatever as you all know um and i stood for a midnight bus that would take me into bundelkhand because that was anyway an area that i was wanting to visit because as a as somebody who had done a uh, a uh, sh- share of television reporting from the big big whatever st- cities and districts one of the biggest privilege as an independent a uh, wanderer roving reporter is to go where the big media doesn't touch with a barge pole and bundelkhand is one such that entire region chambal probably many of us just know by movies of decoits in the 80s and 70s but i wanted to see with my own eyes and it was doubly joy giving for me because sharma ji had told me that pachnada is right in bundelkhand and in jalon in in the in the city of jalon so from mathura um midnight i think around 12 i took I, and yes i wrote about this experience in my decanary column of what it meant to be traveling alone by public transport in uttar pradesh in the so called notorious state in yogi adityanath's land in whatever uh, unknown places i wrote about that um so i boarded the bus by 6 o'clock i was down i got off at jalon um and it was it was a bus which was otherwise it was a sleeper bus it was kind of okay comfortable you you just had your other you know in general a womanly intuition right you just want to be safe so it was really a good journey except that there was the, the bus was stinking somebody i think was carrying some <laughs> i don't know whether it was some raw produce or something like that but for that the, the i had no complaints about the travel per se and then when i got off at jalon i was received by the sarpanch of a village in jalon somebody called amit and i'm going to now share the screen because now you you will see the picture of that um i mean he he, he had sent his uh, somebody from the village to actually pick me up it was super cold it was still it was still february end 2022 it was still super cold so i went into jalon it was a kind of a hotel which was which i was really to be to be very 
honest with you, I was a little scared. I was even looking out is there some hidden camp or something like that. And um, many of these places where I told you that I choose to stay in homes and hotels, the way it works is that my gender is often my advantage. So Amit's mother and, and aunt who actually asked me when and I met them in the village that uh, afternoon, they said, Are you alone? You come to the hotel in our house. And that's it, chalo. So that's all I needed. I just went into their house and uh, stayed there for the next two days. And I then asked this Sarpanch, Amit, I told him, and it was a model village. The reason why I selected that was it had been in the news. Uh, incidentally, it was also part of NDTV India, the Hindi channel for some time. So I got some connections to get through to him. Otherwise, sometimes it's tough to track down people. And there, the election day, uh, I saw people cast their vote. I saw how caste equations play out in the village. I saw the women going in a, uh, you know, in a queue, all that. Today's story, I shall restrict it to the chase of the river. And so um, I went into, I asked Amit, so what about the river? Can you, uh, yeah, this was my Bundelkhand travel. And before this, let me quickly show you. This was Vrindavan. Um, and in fact, the, the temple. Yeah, some many of I know you've, you may have seen the picture, the widows of Vrindavan, the place of Mutt, the ashram where I stayed. In fact, the next one was one such ashram, but not, I was told that Kuch Shadi Shuddha Aurte Bhi Hai. It was also a place of bhajans and a lot of worship. This was my travel into Bundel Khand. Uh, have I left out any picture? Yeah, this was very beautiful. I mean, you know, th there was this lady dancing. This was the entire um, temple. And then when I landed at Jalon, Amit's uh, associate had come. No, actually, sorry, it is Amit himself. It's just that the jacket, he's not as, you know, <laughs> the jacket was uh, in the wind is what it looks like. And I was pillion wearing this ghastly winter clothing. Yeah, let's. And then I did this travel into the village. And then you can see the stomping feet of the Uttar Pradesh police. And they were there for on election duty. And I asked Amit, uh, who is a young man who, uh, you know, whose village is a model of cleanliness. And you can see that he's an absolute idealist from, from uh, former Prime Minister Vajpayee to the Mahatma to Ambedkar to Vivekananda to Bharat Mata. So basically, it was a wonderful one full day of stay. I think, yeah, this is Amit's Chachi. Um, incidentally, I've written about her as well in the column in Deccan Herald. Uh, she was there. And then I asked the people about Panchnada because after all, it was their region and nobody had a clue. So this is Amit's mother. And uh, I was uh, I, I was actually very travel fatigued. I, I almost had some kind of a stomach ache and things, but I was healed and nurtured by these two women who had never, I'd never met any time before in my life. The mother of the Sarpanch. Yeah, as you can see, I was really well taken care of. Somebody who wants to do, yeah. Fresh fulkas and raita and salad and all that. Now, the thing is, nobody knew Pachnada. In fact, Amit himself asked his associates in the village, Padta hai? But in the last story with which I'm ending, we drove and we drove. It must have been about 45 kilometers. And we finally came to the confluence of these, of the five rivers. Any guesses? Anybody wants to take a guess? What are the five rivers in this region of Uttar Pradesh? Anybody wants to unmute themselves? Because sorry, since I'm sharing, I can't see. If you want to take a shot at naming the five rivers that, the, you know, we, we make such a big deal about the Allahabad Sangam, Triveni. But nobody, this, this place is so unsung. It used to be decoyed... Uh, region at some point of time. Anybody wants to unmute and say which are the five rivers? 
um chambal go on um yamuna yeah. Yeah, Ch- chambal yamuna the, the, yeah that's too covered then mm, no i yeah. just know two i guess <laughs> just guessing okay anybody else so i'm also reading out from from uh the the you know the gods of the internet have put it out so the pachnada at the border of jalon district itawa district and oraiya district of uttar pradesh state india also near the border of bhind of madhya pradesh where tourists can witness the confluence of five rivers dash 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 so of which we have got yamuna and chambal any more guesses or you want me to give the gandak kosi gomti any of these uh gandak kosi kosi would be a little more towards the east i feel anu i don't know if kosi kosi flows this part this is we are still talking about the we yeah, are the southwest of up acha yeah gandak okay gandak and nepal and bihar that's right we are talking about yeah so so uh, we are talk yeah so i don't think you would have heard these two it's kuwari and pahuj kuwari pahuj and sind nadi okay kuwari pahuj yamuna chambal and sind it's a rich habitat for dolphins pahuj is a river flowing in bhind and there's a tributary of the sind river so this is pachnada and mind you what felt terrible after having been thrilled that thanks to this man in mm. juhu beach um in uttar pradesh that uh, i had discovered this place which even the locals didn't know what felt really bad was there was not even a thing that that um that gave indication that this is a confluence of uh itne nadi there was no indication so the up tourism department which promotes banaras and prayagraj and purvanchal and uh, taj mahal what stops them from at least putting pachnada on the map of uttar pradesh on the tourist map of uttar pradesh i mean imagine and and i actually wanted to follow and i'll just come back to this let me just show you some pictures in case i have some yeah when we were coming back this is bundelkhand we were driving back from pachnada back to jalon because at same night i had to um, stay back and 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 next morning leave for lucknow uh, into the avad region and so these women as you can see and as as cliche and stereotypical as it may seem this is the reality of their lives uh and the you know it's it's so filled with ravines this whole chambal and it's no surprise why it was why why people uh, chose to have their uh, let's say yeah outlaws or whatever you know uh, like like he says in pan singh tomar no you don't say daku uh you you are a rebel so depending on which side you are on the infrastructure of the region um uh, was pretty stark and one of the yeah i think yeah one of the things that that uh, really struck me was dur dur tak there is absolutely no no hint of any facilities like it's there's no hotel restaurant place to stand st- i mean lots of places to stand but no place to really sit take a this thing because it's it's miles and miles and miles of these ravines and some of them are so huge so tall that when i came back i met a a cop you know in, in the next uh, two days i met a cop who is in fact a super cop in the uttar pradesh police he's also uh, known he's also pretty notorious and people see him as a hero but he's clearly not liked um, for what he does but i had uh, an interaction with him just to have his take on uh, the law and order situation in in the state and so many other things and also because it was posted in bundelkhand in, in jalon 
and he was saying the till date and until very recently the the place was notorious for kidnapping like you would probably abduct somebody rich or a business guy and all that you had to do was to just take them to this region jalon and beyond uh, to this uh, bhind the, you know the, the place where it borders bhind and and this uh, itawa this one and you can just hide them and the police matlab dhoondte reh jaoge like that at no there's, there's no way you can even find it's treacherous terrain it's unsparing unforgiving and it's got no infrastructure i didn't have enough time to go into what kind of schools are there what kind of um healthcare facilities are there because i was there for a very very short time and in 23 days i was covering some eight districts that too i had to go to the other end of the state right but i almost always feel when i see a region say i must come back and um I remember that the name of that gentleman uh, in Jogu Beach. His name was Pramod Shukla, not Sharma. Yeah, Shukla Ji was what we called him. And then when I came back, I I called him. I I actually tried calling him for the Pachnad. I was so thrilled to see that to meet that river Pachnad. I I felt so grateful. Like I was like, this you know it it needed somebody to open this part of India to me, to to open my eyes to this beauty, and. कुछ भी मतलब कहीं पे भी किसी ब्रोशर में नहीं मिलेगा इस इसका कुछ इंफॉर्मेशन एंड आई कॉल्ड इम आई सेड शुक्ला जी आपने जो 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 भी और जहां भी कहा मैं जाकर आई एंड ही सेड नहाई आप यमुना जी में इसने कान पकड़ लिया आई सेड नहीं देखिए द रीजन व्हाई आई कुडंट टेक अप यू नो डिप इन द आई मीन इमेजिन आई वुड हैव रियली बीन सो व्हाटएवर अब्सॉल्वड एंड एंड दिस थिंग बिकॉज़ एक ने यार पांच पांच ने दिया सो माय माय account of pap would have been complete i mean you know totally washed out or been in a brand new account <laughs> however i told them i said it wasn't uh, a place where i could uh, take a dip a there was no ladies ke liye snan ghat there were just a lot of boatmen who were there and they themselves were discouraging me they said nahi nahi aap yahan snan mat kijiyega i said kyun he said nahi dekhiye yahan par i say i realize what is a little dark in color So then somebody said, "Ye Kanpur se aati hai." So there were, you know, sometimes affluence. Though, though Kanpur, I am told these days is not so. Um, the water is not that polluted. However, I was actively discouraged from taking a nadi snan, something which probably the next time I might still go ahead and do it and and brave it, all for the sake of Pramod Shukla ji. And with that, I acknowledge the all the teachers I've met on the journey who have led me to. it's almost like i am blindfolded and every time meri aankhon ki patti khul jati whether it's this or uh, padmanabhapuram or or many of these and that i think has been the biggest gift of solo travel and the biggest gift of a choice that i have made that i shall not go to any place with any agenda in fact if anything i totally recommend that agenda free journalism is way the way to go when you don't pre decide from the from the uh, lens and the chashma of an urban indian of an educated uh indian but surrender yourself to that story to see what the ground speaks to you because what you are going to find on the ground is far richer than what your mind your heart or your intellect can plan these were my three most unforgettable among the many unforgettable journeys and my view from the window seat namaskara and thank you that was brilliant और अभी ऑन दिस नोट यू शुड सिंग द सॉन्ग दैट रियली यू नो इज फिट फॉर द एंडिंग आई हैव हैम इन माइंड बट इफ समबडी एल्स हैज अ सजेशन डज एनीबडी वांट टू मेक अ फरमाइश टू वासंती फॉर अ या सॉन्ग इज एग्जैक्टली जाना नहीं तू कभी हार के नो नो वन सेकंड उमा इज on the dot 30 minutes 4 on a saturday evening good evening india this is this is how i used to do it yeah 
very nice <laughs> hey and thank you that you know i love it when these screens and hearts and hands come up on my screen i didn't know to uh, somebody had a suggestion for the song ha boski saying ruk jana nahi to kabhi haar ke acha um okay any any other farmaish thanks for introducing pramod no no pachnada ha 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 yeah sudeepta shanbag thank you thank you so nice oh sneha is also a very kind person tujh pe dil qurba oh okay itna akla chalo okay i was thinking of musafir ho yaro ha huh, and what i drew up you know uh, just as i was talking to you o majhe re apna kinara nadiya ki dhara hai sahilo pe बहने वाले कभी सुना तो होगा कहीं हो दिस इज ऑल आई कैन डेयर टू सिंग ऑन दिस सो आई ओपन अप द लिरिक्स एंड आई एम लाइक दिस इन वुमेन डोंट ट्राई बियॉन्ड दैट तुम बसंती हो किशोर कुमार नहीं ब्रिलियंट दिस वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट्स एब्सोल्युटली and no, yeah i am going to sing mere pyare vatan at the end i i just thought in case there are some questions or sharings you know uh, we can spend a few minutes uh, i have seen this message train travel through the ravines of chambal is a very special journey actually i also wanted to go to jhansi you know uh, that's probably for the next time anybody wants to share their most unforgettable travel let's let's add a little caveat to it when yeah a, a two minute story each um of something that you never expected to find but were led to it uh, mr venkatesh aingar has his hand up uh, so you can yes sir go ahead yeah Hey, sorry, sorry. That hand was accidental. That was long ago when you asked who has traveled how many states. Oh, oh. that was then. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, okay. Since I'm online, I just say something. Um, uh, uh, Oraya, Oraya is. I've been to that place. Uh, traveled for a wedding of a friend nearly three decades ago. Um, he was the only MBBS doctor in the entire uh, district at that time, and my classmate. and uh, and so he got the uh, the sitting mp's dot granddaughter hand because he was the only mbbs doctor actually so that was that was 3 decades ago i wonder how it is now <laughs> so how was the place as in you you um so so what i like uh, it was full of ganne ki khet and uh, yeah yeah that's that's the memory which i have the place going in walking through i mean outdoor toilets obviously you had to go into the ganne ki khet and um, yeah and there were the breakfast used to be uh, kachcha doodh with ganne ka juice uh, mixed together yeah kachcha doodh with ganne ka thing or uh, or a curd you know the pichle din ka uh, the doodh which becomes dahi and then oh. with that dahi you add ganne ka juice and have it so that was the i mean big glass you know 1 liter glass of it that was breakfast uh-huh. so yeah <laughs> yeah uh anybody else i think anuradha has anuradha has raised yeah i wanted to share um uh, one such experience of visiting a very unique uh, geography like when vasanthi uh, you know when you told us about um, how a certain thing is like in tamil nadu but it belongs to kerala so i went to this place in uh, in eastern india like in bengal uh, like near kuch bihar i mean now the government of bangladesh and india have decided to exchange this but there are what you call enclaves so in the border areas there are really dotted you know say like even the size of a football field 
so like there isn't one like line border what happens in the border are small small tiny tiny patches of land which you cannot make out with your eyes there are just you know um cement posts like pillars over there so you're now in bangladesh and then you're in india so this is called like their enclaves like so from and then the story, there are many stories that come out of it maybe you can google chit mahals they are called chit mahals so you're now in india and then you cross over then you're in bangladesh so that field there or oh, that belongs like you know there's one tiny field which is in india and there is like there are enclaves within enclaves so you are for example you are uh, you know you are in india then you get inside a football field kind of a place say which is bangladesh and then you go inside again in india so there is like i i mean there are many uh, stories about how that happened there's a game of chess that the uh, you know the kings played and they just gave away land and all that so i i, I went there for a story and i think that's pretty um, unique and then and, and also very weird way of life so i thought i just share that with you when vasanti told about uh, tamil nadu and kerala so yeah, yeah maybe- <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Anu. Always nice to find these delightful surprises. I think uh, Deepankar, you want to share as well. You can unmute and speak, Mr. Deepankar. Yeah. Uh, Uma, just checking if I if I send you a couple of pictures now by um, uh, that I've just discovered by WhatsApp. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you able to share on the chat window? Uh, sharing. Yeah, let me. Right, let me try. If you can, then because uh, you will you will get to see Mr. Pramod Shukla. Oh, okay. Is, is, the, is that the person in the striped shirt? Uh, not yet. No, no, no. That's that's not him. Uh, I'm going to send you the picture of his. Okay. Do, do, so, do you so. want do you want him to remain a mystery or you want to see him? Please tell me in the chat box if you want to see uh, Pramod Shukla. Yeah, I think. Uh, hmm. There is no way to attach a picture in the chat. Oh, all right. Acha, because I I just discovered that I I have a I have a very nice uh, video of his, but uh, video may be a little too long. But at least the pictures are are very good. It's him. It's about him. It's like him speaking to me. Never Achha. mind. That's fine. Okay. Um, let yeah, me see. Sorry, I, I, I came back. I I I was about to actually I. Uh, Put my hand up and brought it down because when Anuradha was speaking about this chit mahal, hi, who is this? Is the punker? The punker, please. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was uh, about to, uh, you know, ask or rather add that you know I read that there was this satranj uh, game and between the king of Kuch Bihar and some other king on the other side and. that is how this enclaves came up because they gave, went on giving pieces of land and maybe onradha has visited i heard that there are even in, in uh, i think now it has been exchanged but there were a piece of land within bangladesh which belongs to india and then within that there was a piece which belonged to bangladesh and these became very good havens for the Uh, you know, backwards underworlds who will commit some crime in India and go and hide in Bangladesh or do something mischief in Bangladesh and come back to India. But technically, they can't be caught. But one thing I have read about them is that up to the time, I think this current government did the exchange for almost 65 years. Uh, at least the citizens of uh, the India who stayed there, and I think there were around five lakh people. they could never really vote for any of the elections because they could not come so it was a huge tragedy i think that has been and and why um, not sorry sorry i didn't understand yeah, because yeah because they are in a location uh, which uh, geographically was within bangladesh so you know indian government could not go and set up a polling booth so now that has been resolved. so since anuradha said i was just asking her is yeah. this really true but i think she is also saying yeah, it is there are hundreds of such there used to be now i think the exchange has happened or we also don't know what is the state uh, right now but uh, there are hun- there used to be hundreds of such enclaves and oxclaves so what happens is these people are undocumented 
Now, if they need a passport, they'll have to come to India. But in order to come to India, they'll have to cross Bangladesh. Now, in order to cross Bangladesh, they'll need to have passport. So because of all these issues that people living here, they couldn't have really uh, any documents uh, as such, be it passport or Aadhaar card or voter card or whatever we need uh, to be called, uh, you know, people. So they were human beings, but they were very, they're undocumented and their lives really, because they never had access to health care, they didn't have electricity. So when I went there, I saw that they had to go, you know, say some kilometers to just, I mean, they had access to devices, like they bought, you know, with whatever money they had, they had bought mobile phones. So there was a shop about a kilometer away, which had full of charging stations and they would charge their phones there. So yes, they couldn't vote because obviously, uh, to reach there or for them to come, they have to, it, it's not a contiguous, you know, land. So that's very funny. And it's only in India where uh, we had or such a thing. Hmm. No, in fact, one of the things which I noticed when I went from uh, Shiliguri where I met you and uh, Anu, and then I went into Kuch Bihar, uh, I was actually accompanying Dr. Swaroop Chatterjee. Uh, Amazingly right. knowledgeable veterinarian uh, from, <laughs> from, from Baharampur and uh, with him I drove up about eight hours to Darjeeling um, <laughs> and then uh, I mean almost up to Darjeeling, not, not really there and then of course crossed over and he was saying that there are I think 42 rivers, I mean that, 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 that it's the riverine um, systems in, in that part is just so, yeah, and then there are small yeah. rivulets and each of them has such beautiful <laughs> names. I was just completely amazed that part of Bengal, I mean, you don't really uh, get to know so much about North Bengal at all. Right, it's right. A gem, it's a treasure, absolute missing of music, of food, of cuisines, of language, of everything. Yeah. You must come back again soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I see a few messages which I'm going to quickly read. I don't want to take up too much time of everyone. It may be time to close, but... Balaji Shankar, it's amazing how the borders blend so seamlessly beyond how we like to imagine based on maps. Ruchi Singh has something very lovely to say. Two roads diverge in a wood and I chose the less traveled one and that has made all the difference suits you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I recommend this, um, let's say, travel not just to, uh, the you know, to the fraternity and sisterhood of media, uh, because it's been my personal experience that sometimes you're so, I mean, you have so many notions about a place and you just have to go there for you to get rid of those, of those notions. Uh, or, or sometimes it's like, you know, one, one quick uh, mention, because I'm from Karnataka, um, Raichur, a place called Devadurga, which, which people from, from this region are, I'm not sure Vishwa and Uma, all of you may have known but i specifically bring that up um, during 2018 karnataka elections a filmmaker friend i requested her to come along with me mithila hegde for some part of the journey um, because i wanted some things filmed uh, beyond just what a phone can capture and i remember that the entire 34 kilometer stretch from from one point in raichur up to this thing was so colorful but that colorful was anything but happiness giving. It was a color that made you feel sad and full of despair. This was the color of the pots of water. I kid you not, the entire stretch, and we were there about 7, 7.30. We, uh, uh, you know, there is a person called Abhay in, in Raichur, Abhay Kumar, who's from Bihar, who came to, uh, but settled in Delhi came to Hyderabad to study, has made Raichur his base of work for the past 20 years with the children of Devadasis and Devadasi women. Though it's a system that, that according to law doesn't exist, but the ground picture, many women who've been trafficked, have been rescued and, you know, that's Abhay's story. But I want to quickly fast forward from uh, when uh, I traveled from his place in Raichur to, to Devadur, Almost the thing, there was just such a water scarcity. And for me, it was a shock. And I think the water experts on this group should, should really make sense of that. Because it's so close to the Krishna Nadi. It's not like some Thar desert or something. And yet, there was just no water. I mean, people were queuing up either some pot, there was, there was some well, the big 
and people are this thing and you know the whole this thing were full of pots of water and in fact one of the places i actually stopped by and i was very conscious that i might seem like a typical tv journalist putting the mic you know this thing aapko kaisa lagta hai aapko pani nahi hai kind of thing but i really stood there and i just saw just to see make sense of this there was this lady her name was zena and she said um, you know i could see that she is a woman with so much of personal dignity you could see from her body language and yet she had to be in that fight and that scramble for water she she was just standing there uh, amidst the many colorful pots that had been lined up and her pot had been like i think uh, that plastic pot had come back and then she just when i asked her i said uh, zainab to kitne kitne ghante lagte hain aapko you know pani wagera dene mein and then she just after at the end of it she just told me saying that आप जो शहर में रहती हैं आप लोग जो शहर में रहते हैं सिर्फ आपको हक है क्या ऐसे फॉर फॉर डिग्निटी शी यूज सम वर्ड यू नो इट्स इट्स अ थिंग ऑफ कनाडा यू नो गौरव गौरव मर्यादे दैट्स हाउ वी कॉल इट्स इट वाज अ हिंदी ब्लेंड विद कनाडा एंड शी शी आज मी व्हिच बेसिकली ट्रांसलेटेड सेइंग दैट आर यू द ओनली पीपल हु हैव दैट राइट टू अ रिस्पेक्टेबल लाइफ um and i could really not get past that uh, question that she asked me and uh, yeah and then of course as some locals pointed out one former congress mla's house was there the piped water this thing stopped at his house so all those uh, were some of these images that will come back with uh, from your multiple travels um yeah some of these that we have shared today thank you thank you bio man the song ai mere pyare vatan okay all right this this is uh, this has been asked by sneha walki whose mother is very dear to me um but it's of course a song that resonates with many of us it's originally sung by mannada and from a film called kabuli wala it's tagore's masterpiece e mere pyare vatan ए मेरे बिछड़े चमन तुझ पे दिल कुर्बान तू ही मेरी आरजू तू ही मेरी आबरू तू ही मेरी जान ए मेरे प्यारे वतन ए मेरे बिछड़े चमन तुझ पे दिल कुर्बान तेरे दामन से जो आई उन हवाओं को सलाम चूम लू मैं उस जुबा को जिस पे आए तेरा नाम सबसे प्यारी सुबह तेरी सबसे रंगी तेरी शाम तुझ पे दिल कुर्बा तू ही मेरी आरजू तू ही मेरी आबरू तू ही मेरी जान तू ही मेरी जान that was brilliant and what a wonderful note to conclude today's session thank you so much vasanthi thank you for a brilliant storytelling session thank you for really lovely and heart touching and heart rending stories if i may call them that and your beautiful singing thank you very much and thank you everyone for being here and listening and participating And sharing your stories too thank you very much yes and and please for all the uh, good work that biome does please support uh, these talks uh, if there's a way that you, we can join in for future talks uh, that's also something you may want to share in the chat mm-hmm. box and uh, venkatesh says incidentally the 100th amendment to the indian constitution allow the resolution of the problem of india bangladesh enclave issue okay venkatesh i'm just kind of confirming that you are the one with the army are you the person who is a doctor in the army or am i yeah you're right you're right you're right vasanthi so you're in jodhpur at the moment you're joining us from jodhpur 
Yes. Wow. Beautiful. Thank you. So Lovely. Tasin says Raichur is surrounded by two rivers, Tunga and Krishna. How oh, the Tasin? Uh, thank you for bringing that up. And yeah, and thank you, Boski. I'm so sorry I couldn't sing that song for you, but there's always a another song session we shall do separately. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I would so we post about these talks on our Instagram channel, which is uh, Biome Environmental Trust. You can look for us on Instagram and follow us. So uh, whatever talks we uh, have, we'll be posting about those, and then you can register and attend those talks. But plus, also I post on the pickle jar group, so <laughs> that also happens. I have a suggestion. Hmm. There are some people here who I see who are not. From let's say pickle jar, hmm. uh, or or I don't know whether biome, but uh, I always believe that the army of the good should stick together. So I think uh, the biome uh, group may have your email IDs. So anything in the future, if I find a link, I mean when I say future, in the next two days, if I find a link that is relevant to what we spoke about, I shall share those. Uh, is that possible, Uma? That it be sent to these email addresses? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, because I've sent the uh, call links to all those who had registered. Yeah. So I can just, uh, it, to that email itself, I can attach and send. Yeah, yeah. And so to, to just give you one uh, last reference, which is that uh, the group that you keep listening, hearing about Pickle Jar, it's a group of Indians worldwide. Uh, we believe in really uh, bringing together a community of Indians who are, who believe in a, an India which is really genuinely all embracing. I don't want to use the word inclusive, tolerant, because many of them have just lost their original mm -hmm. meanings. But I just mean that there's so much of beautiful things to share, so many things to learn from each other. If, we, if only we can sit and listen and you know converse in a mutually respectful manner. That's the community we're trying to build um, of Indians worldwide. So if you wish to join, you're most welcome. You can drop us a message. Thank you. Namaskara. Thank you all once again. Thank you so much. And have a great uh, Saturday evening and Sunday in the rest of the week. Yeah. If anybody wants to leave their mail IDs for others to get in touch because there's so much. I'm just leaving my email address. Uh, 